Heavenly Father, your children have come to honor you in the beauty of holiness. Out of the womb of the morning, we declare you reign, you ancient king of Zion, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the mighty one, the awesome one, the one who is great and greatly to be praised. We declare you reign. Adonai, we worship you. You are awesome in this place. We magnify your name. Great are you, Lord, and you are greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of your holiness. You deserve the honor this morning. You deserve the praise this morning. You deserve the adoration this morning. Oh, we worship you. We love you, Lord. We adore you. We magnify your name. Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. In the mountain of your holiness, you are beautiful for all situations. You are the joy of the whole earth. Seated upon Mount Zion by the sides of the north, we thank you that our joy is in you, Lord. You are our source. It is in you we live and move and have our being. We worship you, our source, the source of every good thing. For every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We honor you. We glorify your name. Oria handele bosi andala bashanda la bazo tororo bosi ya mandele le bosi kanta la mali andele bosi ya mandele le bosi kata la brado sotondo lo bosi ya rema mama mazende le boshanda la barabo mazukete le brado sotororo bo mandele le bosi kanto lo brado si ya. We thank you, O oh God. It is in you that we find strength. It is in you we find grace. It is in you we find all that we need. Regede de brado socorobo shaya. For your name is a strong tower. In you we run and we find safety, Lord. It is in you that we find divine safety. We find strength. All power belongs to you, O Lord. We thank you this morning. We magnify your name. We rely on you this morning. We rely on you, Lord. We rely on your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, mighty God. Thank you this morning. Once again, you are here with us to make a way where there seems to be no way. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Revelation 14 from verse 1. The Bible says, Then I looked, and this is what I saw. The lamb stood firmly on Mount Zion and with him a hundred and forty four thousand who had his name and his father's name inscribed on their foreheads, signifying that they are God's own possession. And I heard a voice from heaven, like the sound of great waters and like the rumbling of mighty thunder. And the voice that I heard seemed like music and was like the sound of harpies playing on their harps. And they sang a new song before the throne of God and before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been been purchased, ransomed and redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who have not been defiled with women for they are celibate. These are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. These have been purchased and redeemed from among men as the first fruit sanctified and set apart for special service for God and the lamb. No lie was found in their mouth for they are blameless, spotless, untainted, beyond reproach. Then I saw another angel flying in mid heaven with an eternal gospel to preach to the inhabitants of the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God with awe and reverence and give him glory and honor and praise in worship because the hour of his judgment has come with all your heart. Worship him who created the heaven and the earth, the sea and the springs of the water. Then another angel followed the second one saying, fallen, fallen is Babylon, the great war. She who has made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her immorality, corrupting them with idolatry. She has fallen. May God bless his word this morning. So we know that this scripture is about the future, is about during the days of the great tribulation 
where we will have 144,000 Jews who are sealed um, and they are saved. But now these 144,000, they are just a template of what God can do with people who are consecrated. Verse 1 says, I looked and I saw the Lamb firmly established on Mount Zion. I'm reading Amplified. I saw the Lamb firmly established on Mount Zion. We know the lamb is already done for us. What is yet to do for the 144,000? So we are here this morning. We have already been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. We have already been purchased. We have already been set apart. This morning, let's begin to come by his blood and say, lamb of God, I come by your sacrifice. The sacrifice you sacrificed for me on Mount Calvary. I come by that sacrifice, lamb of God. I thank you that I already have my father's name inscribed on my forehead. I am God's own special possession because you said we are your special people. You said we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood that have been called forth to show the glory and the wonders of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father in heaven. We are God's special people. We are his special possession. We are here this morning as his special people redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And so this morning we come by the blood of the Lamb. We come Come boldly to the throne of grace and mercy. And we come by the blood. We receive mercy. We receive grace. We receive transformation. We receive it. The name of our Father God has been inscribed on our foreheads. On the foreheads of our spouses, our children, our children's children. The name of the Lord is on our foreheads. We are God's special people. We are his possession by reason of the blood of Jesus. Whether with the sin or whatever it is, we are God's special people by reason of the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we honor you. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It said in verse 4, these are the ones who have not been defiled by relations with women. Now, being a virgin is a symbol of spiritual purity. Now, we are going to ask God this morning that Lord, any form of defilement, anything that defiles, anything that would defile my mind, my spirit, my soul, my body. This morning, I bring it to the throne of grace and mercy and I plead the blood of Jesus. Let the blood give us a spiritual bath. Any defilement be washed off. Lord, bath my children, bath my spouse in the blood of the lamb. Perfect us, O God, of any defilement, uh, anything that defiles, uh, anything that defiles. uh, Lord, wash us by the blood this morning. Witchcraft spells that defile, uh, evil dreams that defile uh, dreams of eating uh, and having sex uh, let the blood of jesus purify his church uh, in the mighty name of jesus uh, any defilement uh, swear words uh, evil songs uh, evil declarations uh, evil conversations uh, the bible says uh, oh do not be deceived uh, bad company corrupts good manners uh, lord any bad company that has been corrupting our good manners uh, any bad company that has been defiled in us in the inner man. We receive a wash by the spirit of Jesus. We receive cleansing by the spirit of Jesus. We receive purification by the spirit of Jesus. Hey, We are cleansed. My spouse is cleansed. My children are cleansed. Every defilement Lord upon them. I declare the blood of Jesus. Any seduction, any seductive spirit upon our sons, upon our young men, upon our young women we plead the blood anything that is trying to defile them any Delilahs that want to cut off their hair we are pleading the blood in the name of Jesus blood of Jesus blood of Jesus blood of Jesus oh Lord we receive cleansing by the blood we receive cleansing by the blood in the name of Jesus For our children and our children's children. Lord, anything that defiles in school, anything in the curriculum that defiles, we are pleading the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It says secondly in Revelation 14 verse 4, it says these are the ones who follow the lamb wherever he goes. These have been purchased and redeemed from among men as the first fruits, sanctified and set apart for special service for God and the Lamb. 
Let's receive this morning our sanctification that we are set apart and we want to follow the lamb wherever he goes. We want to be like Jesus. When Jesus was on the earth, he says, the words that I speak are not my own words, but they are words of my father. What I hear my father speaking, that's what I do. What my father says, that's what I do. What I observe my father doing, that's what I come and do in your midst. We want to be like that. Lord Jesus, uh, help us this morning. Uh, Lord, we want to be set apart for special service for God and the lamb. We, we, we we want to be, Lord, uh, those instruments that you use at such a time as this. Uh, Lord, help me uh, to follow you, Lamb of God, wherever you go. Whatever is the direction of the Lamb this morning, uh, that's the direction we want to follow. Whatever the Lamb says, uh, that's what we want to do. Uh, we want to get our marching orders from the Lamb of God. Uh, hey, we want to receive uh, our direction from the Lamb of God. Uh, we don't want to be led uh, by the that the spiritual temperature of our communities or nations, but we want to be led by the lamb. We don't want to be led by what men and women are saying. We want to be led by the lamb. Let the lamb of God lead us, direct us, order our steps in parts of righteousness, order our steps in parts of peace, in parts of your greatness, in parts of your will, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, brethren, I was listening to it um, and uh, you, you know by now that I'm always going through the archives of Kenneth Hagen. You know, I am mentored by Kenneth Hagen from heaven. So he was sharing about a time when he was out of the will of God. And, you know, because he's humble enough to say and you can learn from his mistakes. He said there was a time when he had been going around, you know, ministering a lot in different churches. And he was sharing as he was preaching that God had given him a teaching ministry and also a prophetic ministry. He was a prophet, but he would say, I'm a teacher and I'm also a prophet. So he would put the teaching ministry first and put the prophetic ministry second. And then one day after a, a revival meeting, he had a minor accident, but he, he hurt his arm that he chipped the bone on his arm and all that. In fact, people thought he had broke the arm. And then the word of knowledge came and the Lord, he heard the Lord with an audible voice saying that arm is not broken, but there are sections of the bone that have been chipped off. You're going to need to get this and the other for it. So the Lord told him. Um, and then when he was in hospital, after he'd had the operation for the arm, the Lord appeared to him and said, um, you know what? It could have been worse what happened to you, but I made sure that I protected you so that your arm would not be broken. And that I am telling you that you're going to recover very speedily, miraculously. It won't take long for you to use your arm again. He said, I will heal it. I could have healed you divinely, but I wanted you to experience this journey of being in hospital, of having a sling round your neck for a month so that you would remember to obey me 100%. I could have healed your arm back, back to 100%, but I will not. I will heal it to 99% so that the 1% remains to remind you to obey me 100%. He said, for two years, you've been walking in disobedience. And he was shocked. Lord, what did I do? And the Lord said, I, I told you, I told you, I appeared to you and I told you that I've given you the prophetic ministry. And yet you've been putting your teaching ministry ahead of the prophetic ministry because you prefer teaching. You like teaching. And so because you like teaching, you've put the teaching ministry first and you've put the prophetic ministry second, but you've reversed the order. And as soon as you reverse the order, you were work, walking in my permissible will, not in my perfect will. And he said, many are like that in the body of Christ. They are walking in my permissible will. That just because I've allowed you to do something doesn't mean that it's my will for your life. That's not what I want for you. You might not be sinning as in committing adultery or lying or whatever, but as soon as you change my word and you do something less than what I told you to do, you're working in disobedience. And the Lord gave him the opportunity to repent. And when I was listening to it, it touched my heart. And I said, I'm going to share it as well with my sisters and brothers on the prayer line, because this morning we want to be those who follow the lamb wherever he goes. And you see things, instructions change. Five years ago, God might have been saying five years ago, do this. But right now in 2023, that marching orders are changed. 
and you are still doing what you did five years ago. You are still refusing to get with the program and you are walking in permissible will rather than the perfect will of God. I want us to pray right now and repent and say, Lamb of God, I repent where I've not followed your instructions. You know, one thing about the testimony of Kenneth Hagin, he said, Jesus told him and said, what is keeping you long in the teaching ministry and out of the prophetic ministry is that the people who invite you to speak, they like your teaching ministry. They like it. So they keep encouraging you to teach and you keep doing it. But you're supposed to be walking in the prophetic. He said men and women can lead you astray. When they like you to do a particular thing, you start doing it more rather than doing what Jesus likes. Let's begin to repent before the Lord. Holy mighty Father in heaven, we thank you that you are merciful and kind, that you are a God of mercy, grace, and compassion. Lord, any way we have moved out of your perfect will and we are walking in your permissible will, we repent of it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We repent, O Lord. We repent renounce the sin of walking in permissible will. We renounce it, O God. Every act of disobedience, you said obedience is better than sacrifice. You said stubbornness is like iniquity and rebellion is like witchcraft. We repent, O God, of every stubbornness, of every iniquity and every witchcraft. Lord, we repent in the name of Jesus. We ask that the blood of Jesus be applied to our sin and the consequences of our sin. Anyway, we are walking in the permissible will of God and not in the perfect will of God. Let the blood of Jesus cleanse us. Blood of Jesus washes. Blood of Jesus purifies. Blood of Jesus renew a right spirit in us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Change us, oh God. Change us. Change us, oh God. Touch each and every one of us. We want to follow the, the scripture in Revelation 14.4. That we want to follow the lamb wherever he goes. When the lamb changes direction, we don't want to remain on the old path saying this is where the lamb used to walk. But we want to be with you, Lord, in sync, following your footsteps. Lord, when you change the path, we want to change the path too. Lord, reveal to each and every one of us here on this prayer platform this morning where we need to change, where we have refused to change and are following the orders of yesterday. Ikaluva sukaleka sikale mahanda rimakuza valika Asanda, rigadu se brado se kayanda, spirit of revelation, spirit of wisdom, malihande le brado siya, speak to each and every one of us this morning. Kuza maheke le kasiya, rima su karabasiya. Jonah had to encounter the big fish that had to change his direction to take him to the center of the will of God. Rima hande le brado siya, Father, this morning by whatever means realign us to the center of your will. Le baru hande le basiya, rigadu sa varada le bosi hande le basiya, mas. Realign us to the center of your will. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shali basia. In kantalabaya. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. The angel of God spoke in, in, in from, from verse 7. And he said, Fear God with awe and reverence. Fear God. The Bible told us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we fear God, there are some decisions we cannot make. There are some things we cannot do. Let's ask once again, Lord, renew once again upon my heart the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Help me to fear God in everything I'm doing. May I fear God? When you fear God, you cannot postpone the assignment. When you fear God, you can't say, God, wait a minute. I'm still finishing off my makeup. When you fear God, you cannot say, God, listen, you are telling me to go to Nineveh, but I prefer to go to Tashish. When we fear God, we cannot do that. When fear God with awe and reverence, Lord, release unto me once again. Refresh upon me, Lord, the fear of the Lord in all I do, in every dimension that I exist in, in the spirit, in the natural, Father, in the physical, help me to fear God. Help me to fear God in my soul, in my mind, in my will and my emotions. May I fear God. Father, as a mother, as a daughter, as a sister, Lord, as a servant in the church of God, help me to fear God. Oh, Lord, help me, help me. May I fear God, renew the fear of God, oh God, upon our hearts. We want to fear God. We want to give you the glory. Lord, we want to fear you and walk in your will. In the name of Jesus, help us, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The angel spoke and said, Fallen, fallen is Babylon, the great, 
who has made all nations drink the wine of the passion of her immorality and corruption and idolatry. Yes, this is in the future, but right now, because we are children of the most high God, Babylon has to fall. What does Babylon represent? The systems of the world. When we're talking about the world, we don't mean planet Earth, the physical thing. We are talking about the systems, how they operate on planet Earth. Their systems, their system of religion, their system that says, look, we only serve one God. All of us Hindus, everybody put together, the Buddhists, the Christians, we all have one God. That is system of Babylon. We refuse to follow the teachings of Babylon. They have a false gospel. They have a fake Jesus. They have a Jesus in Babylon. I tell you, they have a Jesus. If you speak to people who came out of the occult, they will tell you that there is a fake Jesus that they introduced to them in Satanism. When they are babies, they are introduced to a fake Jesus. You know, we refuse to worship a false Jesus. We want to worship the true Jesus. We don't want to amend the word of God. The system of Babylon, it's in the financial realm. It is in the realm of relationships and marriages. They redefine what God said and they tell you a new thing. We refuse the system of Babylon. I want us to pray and denounce it and say in my life and in my family, I denounce the Babylonian system. I refuse to be a partaker of it. I refuse to walk in idolatry of any form. I refuse to drink out of the cup of the wine of the Babylonian spirit. I refuse to drink from the harlot. I refuse to prophesy in the harlot spirit. But Lord, I I receive this morning uh, the grace to walk the path of sanctification and consecration. That we receive the grace to be consecrated uh, by the spirit of the living God. Uh, we refuse the ways of Babylon for ourselves, for our spouses, our children, our children's children, our parents, our grandparents. Uh, we reject the Babylonian spirit. Uh, spirit of Babylon, I reject and denounce you in the mighty name of Jesus. Babylonian spirit uh, that creates division in the church, uh, creates envy and jealousy. We denounce and reject you. Uh, we are the body of Christ. Uh, every one of us is connected to the other and all of us are important uh, for the propagation of the gospel and the coming of your kingdom. Uh, we denounce the Babylonian spirit uh, that has invaded the churches. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You know, sometimes you look at the church of God and you see how they operate like the world. They operate like the world. It depends. It's like a mafia. It's who you know, how you know them, and how you bribed them. In quotation marks, how you sow the seed. In quotes, sow a seed. And it's a bribe. You want to go high in the, in, in the ecclesiastical order. You want to be promoted in the ecclesiastical systems and, you know, be given positions. Who do you know? Who did you bribe? Who? Who did you flatter and tell lies to and lie and big them up? That is the system of Babylon. It's not the ways of God. Father, we reject Babylon. We refuse to be a part of it. In the mighty name of Jesus, we denounce it in all the ministries we represent. Father, Lord, we speak against the Babylonian system and say, in the name of Jesus, let that system fall. Let it fall in the name of Jesus. We refuse to be a partaker of it in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. We worship you this morning. We give you glory this morning. Oh, we thank you. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be magnified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. One of the things that Satan does when he wants you to enter the Babylonian system, he delays the breakthrough. He opposes the breakthrough. He delays it so that you will find another means. Sincerely, a lot of the, the people that I see who are right now behaving like the church is a mafia is because they just wanted to, to do better. You know, they were, they were tired of, of the suffering and the struggles. And then they start to get Godfathers because of the struggle. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, Proverbs 13 verse 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when desire is fulfilled, it is a tree of life. I want us to pray this morning. Any hope that has been deferred, that is causing you to get to the point of wanting to go for plan B, 
Because it looks like, you know, it's not happening. It looks like there's a spiritual embargo. Let us come to the Lord in prayer and say, Father, in every area of my life, where hope has been deferred and it has made my heart sick. I receive healing this morning by the blood of Jesus, by the mercy of God. Let my heart be healed of every sickness that is associated with delayed breakthrough, with delayed prosperity, with delayed miracle, with delayed success. Anyway, my heart has become sicker. For when the heart is sicker, Satan has a landing ground. When the heart is sicker, demons are able to latch on to that sickness. When the heart is sick, the spirit of error begins to operate. Lord, heal my heart, for I don't want to walk in the ways of the Babylonian spirit. Every hope that has been deferred, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, visit us. Visit us this morning. Heal our hearts. Heal our hearts this morning. Heal our hearts, Lord. Any discouragement, any confusion, any giving up, any I'll just roll over and play dead. Lord, heal us from that in the name of Jesus. Heal every heart here, Lord, that is suffering because of delay. Let our hearts be made whole. You say that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Restore our mind, our will, our emotions this morning. Restore us in the name of Jesus. Restore to factory settings. Whatever Satan had damaged, let there be restoration. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Luke chapter 1, the angel Gabriel appears to Zechariah the priest. But Zechariah had suffered long enough. He was an old man and hope deferred makes the heart sick. His heart was sick. He had waited for a child for a long time. They had prayed. They had fasted. They had been gossiped about and still the child did not come. And then the angel comes and tells him something new. And then Zechariah says to the angel in Luke 1.18, how will I be certain of this? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in age. How will I be certain of this 6 a.m. prayer line? Because I have waited for the miracle for 12 years. And you are here telling me I am healed. You are here telling me I'm restored. You are telling me I, I am blessed. But the overdraft has been here for 15 years. The credit card has been here for 10 years. How will I know? How will I know this is going to happen? And the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand and minister in the very presence of God. I have been sent by him to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Listen carefully. You will be continually silent and unable to speak until the day when these things take place. Because you did not believe what I told you. But my words will be fulfilled at their proper time. I want you to pray for two things. Number one, Lord, because it's a new day, it's a new dawn, it's a new season. Whatever sickness my heart had acquired that causes me not to believe when the word of God comes. Lord, I receive healing from that sickness. I will not doubt anymore. I will not doubt anymore. I receive all oh God healing. I am full of faith by the Holy Spirit. I will not doubt. Lord Jesus, I will not doubt. My soul will not doubt. My mind will not say, you've heard all this before. I will not doubt. It's a new season. It's a new dawn. God is doing something new right here. In the name of Jesus. Father, where my heart had begun to be sick concerning this testimony. Lord, I will not be like Zachariah. You will not need to strike me down because of unbelief. I renounce and reject unbelief. I rebuke doubt and unbelief. I am ready, oh God, for the manifestation of your glory. For the manifestation of your power. Here I am, Lord. I am ready. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Gabriel said, I stand and minister in the very presence of God. In the very presence. When we stand to pray. Bible says in, in, in Hebrews um, 
12 22 we have come to mount zion so we pray in minister in the very presence of god and that fact that we are praying from his presence means that his word cannot return to him void it must prosper gabriel said my words will be fulfilled at their proper time at that proper time at the kairos moment i want you to receive it and say lord this morning i receive the fulfillment of your word in my life at the kairos moment at the proper time at the appointed time and i know the appointed time is this season i receive the fulfillment of your words your word is living and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword your word like isaiah 55 from verses 10 and 11 oh lord it tells me your word cannot come back to you void but it must prosper way to the thing that you sent it up and it must accomplish the purposes for which you designed it for i believe it this morning i receive it the word cannot come back void in the mighty name of jesus you are able lord in jesus mighty name we pray amen finally this morning Jabez was like us once upon a time. Jabez went through stuff that was not consistent with his destiny. Jabez went through stuff. The Bible says he was more honorable than his brothers. But, oh, because his mother said, I gave birth to you in pain. Jabez began to suffer. And then he cried to the Lord. And he said in, in, in First Chronicles 4.10, all that you would indeed bless me, Lord, bless me indeed and enlarge my property, enlarge my borders, enlarge my coast, enlarge what I own, enlarge what I possess, enlarge the capacity of my bank account, enlarge the capacity of the lands that I have and the houses and that your hand would be with me and you would keep me from evil so that evil does not hurt me. And God granted his request. May we receive like Jabez this morning, a divine turnaround in the mighty name of Jesus. Cry to the Lord and say, Lord, bless me indeed. For the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and it adds no sorrow. Lord, bless me indeed. When I am blessed indeed, every side of my life is all right. Spiritually, in the soul, and in the body, physically. 3 John 2. Beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. When I am blessed indeed, I am healed. I am transformed. I am well. I am full of joy no mental problems no depression no anxiety no fear no guilt no shame when i am blessed indeed i am blessed in every dimension i am blessed financially i am blessed health wise i am blessed physically i am blessed emotionally i am blessed psychologically bless me indeed oh god let me be blessed there are no question marks when i am blessed there is no but but oh she has this but oh i am blessed let my children be blessed. Uh, my spouse be blessed. Uh, my family be blessed. Uh, Lord, enlarge my coast. Uh, enlarge my borders. Uh, enlarge my property. Enlarge my influence. Uh, enlarge what you've blessed me with. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, let your hand be with me. Keep me from evil, Lord. Evil will not hurt me. It will not hurt my spouse. It will not hurt my children. It will not hurt my brothers and sisters. It will not hurt my parents. It will not hurt any one of us. It will not hurt my prayer partners. It will not hurt the body of Christ. Evil will not hurt us. Thank you, Lord, for granting our request. In the name of Jesus. We believe it, Lord. We receive it. For you said in Matthew 7, 7, Ask and keep on asking and you will receive. Seek and keep on seeking and you will find. Knock and keep on knocking and the door shall be open unto you. Father, we believe it this morning. We receive the answers to our request. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen.